fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. The Lone Ranger had saved the life and property of Mexican-born rancher Juan Mendota. Despite the masked man's protest, the grateful Mendota presented a token of gratitude. It is not gold, because I know you would not accept it. It is this, amigo. A jug of the most wonderful sauce in all the world. It is called Desert of the Devil. A rare sauce for only a brave and strong man like yourself, senor. Take it, please. Gracias, amigo. Away from the ranch house, the Lone Ranger and Toto stopped. Toto, curious tasted a drop of the red sauce called Desert of the Devil and replaced the container in the Lone Ranger's saddlebag. Suddenly, the liquid took effect. <coughs> there you are, Toto. Drink this water quickly. Toto placed the canteen of water to his mouth and drank deep of the contents. But when he stopped, his expressions of pain were even greater. <laughs> Toto, if that devil's dessert can make you act like that, it's surely the hottest in the world. Hotter. Hotter than volcano. The water has relieved the burning inside. No, water make fire worse. Think it burn roof and mouth. <coughs> burn inside the way, too. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hours passed before the effects of the Mexican sauce wore off. The searing quality of the ingredients impressed Tonto as few things ever had. As he and the Lone Ranger rode northward, the Indian confessed... Oh, Kimasabi. Sauce worse than bullets and arrows. <laughs> For a while, me think maybe me die. Well, you survived it all right. Good thing you didn't take a spoonful. Uh, you're all right now? Uh, came a but mouth only hot as sun now. <laughs> Good. Then let's move a little faster. With the devil's dessert in his saddlebag, the masked man sent his horse into a gallop. Come on, Zulu. Get him up, stop. At that moment, some miles to the north, a great gathering of Indians had assembled in the lush valley surrounded by the great rock mountains. Chiefs and braves from many tribes were present. And they sat solemnly before the great teepee, which enclosed the greatest chief of them all, Blue Beaver. 
Near the top of one hill overlooking the encampment in the valley, two men looked down on the scene. One of them was an Indian, Joe Tintic. Joe had been educated in a white man's school and spoke the language well. But his later education had been the wrong kind. And now the cunning red man talked with his crooked white friend, Roy Lyman. Lyman was angry. Hey, look at them. Not one of them moving around. Not even a sound. How long is this going to go on? It will go on until the great chief blue beaver dies or is cured. The medicine man is working over him now. It is what your white doctors would call a crisis. This is a fine idea, do. Joe, I've been depending on you to make these tribes of yours rise up and attack that settlement of Morganville. You're not telling me news, Lyman. I want them to do it, too. After all, I become your partner when you get rid of them and take over the settlement, don't I? Sure you do. I want to see Captain Morgan and those settlers he brought there run out of this territory. Hey, look. Suppose Chief Blue Beaver dies. Is that bad for us? No. <laughs> no, Lyman. That's the best thing that could happen. My tribe believes that when a chief dies, his enemies should go with him to the happy hunting ground to be at his mercy. So they ride out and kill his enemies. What if Blue Beaver lives? It's still good for us, Lyman. Why? Because then there will be great feasting and games. Then they will seek to capture their enemies and humiliate them before all the chiefs. A big celebration, huh? Yes, for days. They eat and hold contests of speed and skill. They wrestle. And, and they make their enemies prisoners. That's the big thing. They'll capture the Morganville bunch, huh? Capture them, keep them alive for a few days, and then there's a climax kill them. You see why it's good for you, no matter what happens to Blue Beaver? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I wish it had happened soon, one way or another. I'm getting sick of waiting. <laughs> Late that day, the medicine man emerged from the teepee where he had been treating Blue Beaver. He made the announcement the chiefs had waited to hear. Oh, Pamini, Anitu, Ataka, Ohama, I Gama! When he had finished, a single yell split the air. <laughs> then throughout the camp, the others joined in a blood-curdling cry of thanksgiving. <laughs> In the underbrush where they had come now, Joe Tintic turned to Roy Lyman. You hear that, Lyman? You know what that means, don't you? Well, I didn't savvy what that medicine hombre said, but it seems to me like the old chief's going to get better. Is that right? Yes. He's well once more. And so to celebrate to the gods, the festival starts tonight. So soon, huh? Yes. Squaws and children are starting to get the food together for the first night's feeding. Look, you see? The braves are hurrying to where they have their horses. Does that mean... Yes, Lyman. That means they're going to take enemy captives. A short time later, in war paint and feathers, a great band of Indians rode out of the valley and headed for the settlement of Morganville. Cap Morgan, elderly scout and guide who had led the small band of settlers into the town that now bore his name, was the first one to see the Indians riding down from the hills that evening. Men, get your guns! It's Indians! They're coming! The Redskins are coming! The settlers put up a gallant but useless fight. The Indians, outnumbering them ten to one, used guns and arrows with devastating effect and forced the survivors to surrender. Within an hour, the settlers, leaving their dead behind them, were marched back toward the hills, prisoners of the Indians. Cap Morgan, a captive like the rest, trudged along at the end of a column, muttering about the arrogant savages who herded the men, women, and children along the path, now enveloped by the gray of evening. I know what they're up to. If they get away with this, it'll mean death to everyone here. I've got to find some way to make a break for it and get to Fort Schuyler. I've got to, no matter what. The captives and captors were moving along a high embankment above a deep stream when old Cap Morgan made his break for freedom. Here I go. Wish me luck. Hey! Cap Morgan's aging legs found youth again. He reached the edge of the cliff as the first shots were fired. One of them caught him in the shoulder as he dived downward into the darkness below. Joe Tintic led the Indians to the edge of the cliff 
And once more, he spoke in English before addressing his tribesmen in native tongue. It was Morgan! I saw him! And I know my shot got him! Ha! He's dead after all these years! It was Joe Tindy who killed him! The founder of Morgansville! Ha! And the magic! Don't have a... About an hour later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto, riding along the banks of a valley stream, prepared to water their horses before seeking camp for the night. It was then that they heard a moan and saw the man crawling along the ground near the water. Tonto, there's a man over there and he's hurt. Come along, we're going to help him. The Lone Ranger and Tonto found the wounded Cap Morgan on the bank of the stream where he had plunged after his escape from the Indians. Under the light of the candle which Toto held, uh, the Lone Ranger treated Morgan's shoulder wound, which was not a serious one. Meanwhile, the elderly scout told of the raid and reached a conclusion. And I, I know where the Redskins had taken them. I heard them talking, and I could understand them. Oh, where are they heading? To the valley north of here, in the Great Rock Mountains. I know who you are, and I know you've got an idea where the place is. Yes, I have. You heard them say they took your people prisoners to take part in a celebration for Blue Beaver's recovery? That's right. That means they'll humiliate the settlers in every way possible. And end by killing some or all of them. Yeah, those redskins don't move a finger or, or lift their grunting voices for days while the old chief's sick. But once he gets better, they make up for it by doing everything, including murder. I know Blue Beaver, and I believe he has faith in me. I'll try to get to him and see if it's possible to save the lives of your friends. Well, that's something I couldn't do. Those red skeeters don't like me, especially Joe Tintic. Yes, he's dangerous. That kind of man always is. Still, I'll try to break through the Indians and attempt to speak to the chief. Oh, Cap. Yes? There's an army outpost to the west of here. Sure, know it well. Only a few miles to the west. But all they have there are a couple of lookouts. They also have a telegraph instrument that connects with Fort Schuyler. Uh, that shoulder of yours isn't too painful, is it? No, no, thanks for the way you fixed it. Look here. You want me to go to that outpost and tell them to send for troops from the fort? If you will. Please have them tell Captain Cannon that I'll try to prevent any further bloodshed. Sure. Those Indians sure need shooting up, but it's better to handle things a peaceful way. Better for everyone in the West. Now, ask Cannon not to sweep down on the camp shooting until he's sure of the situation. Meanwhile, Todd and I are going to try to enter the camp from the east slope. The Lone Ranger and Toto led their horses down the east slope above the Indian encampment until they were in a spot not too far removed from the scene of the great celebration. The masked man stared down on the scene, made vivid by the great bonfire in the center of a great ring of men and women. Otto, there's Chief Blue Beaver sitting on the other side of the fire. Ah, let me see. Injun who sit with them. All chiefs of tribe. Yes, I recognize them. The leaders of the Indian nation are all present. And not start to hurt white men yet. No, they're getting ready to feast now. The humiliation of the prisoners will follow. We sneak round camp, go to chief. It's going to be difficult. That's my aim. We'll leave our horses tied here, then work down to that grove of trees behind the chief. Ah, uh, die, scout. Scout is ready, Silver. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. The Lone Ranger and Tonto a very short distance behind the camp, tied their horses to trees. Then they circled the fringe of the camp until they reached an advantageous spot above it. Tonto, we've got to get down there and talk to the chief. Suddenly, the brush before them moved, and a man stepped out, brandishing a gun. Streaks of light from the bonfire lit the evil face of Roy Lyman as he spoke. I'll say what? you could, Tonto, the chief. Go, Tinny! Go, Tinny! Up this way! Help! I got you some new prisoners! Joe Tintic and a host of Indians had come running to the spot where Roy Lyman covered the Lone Ranger and Tonto with his gun. The masked man, seeing a chance to be brought immediately before Chief Blue Beaver, made no attempt to escape. The celebration seemed to stop as the Indians and their captives saw the Lone Ranger and Tonto brought before the row of chiefs seated at the fire. The greatest of the chiefs, whose recovery was the cause for the feast, pushed the great bowl of food away from him and rose to his feet. He looked with flashing eyes at the men brought before him. Oh, oh, Blue Beaver. It's good to see you. I came here for that purpose. Uh, why, you Great come. Chief Blue Beaver, do not give your ears to the lies this masked man may tell. Only white man who is good friend of Indian is the man with me. Roy Lyman is his name. Oh, Joe Tindic. Why you say man with you is friend? For many reasons. The greatest reason is that he saved your life tonight. Uh-huh. Tell him do that. Roy, tell the great chief what you did. Yeah, sure. Chief Blue Beaver and all the rest of you. I've been on a trail of this masked pill and his Indian pal. I heard them say they were going to kill someone. Being a man who doesn't like killing, I decided to do something about it. Lyman, you lying snake! I... Him. Keep him away from my friend! <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry, Blue Beaver. But this man is lying. Me decide that. Go on. Well, it seems they were heading here. And I heard what their plans are. To kill you and all the chiefs with you while you sit here. Ah! Aided and more often led by Joe Tintix, Roy Lyman's story made an impression on the chiefs who were with Blue Beaver. Blue Beaver, who had been helped by the Lone Ranger in the past, endeavored to be fair. He listened to the Lone Ranger's reasons for coming to the camp. When the masked man concluded, Blue Beaver and the lesser chiefs huddled in a long talk. Finally, Joe Tintic was called to join them. He, too, had much to say. When he'd finished, amidst the babble of voices, Chief Blue Beaver summoned the Lone Ranger. Oh! Oh! We tell Chief you, friend of Injun. Some believe, some do not. They say they hear you great man do many things good. Before they believe, first they must see. See what, Blue Beaver? I don't understand. Some chiefs say you white god. But I... Some say you just man. Joe Tindic says you're not good like Indian Braves. So we have contest. You have friend Tonto listen. We tell what contest like. Speaking in the Indian tongue, Blue Beaver outlined the plan proposed by Joe Tindic. Present among the chiefs were two Braves, considered by the Red Men to be the greatest marksmen with bow and arrow and revolver. If the Lone Ranger were to beat either of the Indians, his prowess might be acknowledged and his life spared. But if his marksmanship was not as great, he would go to death with the other white prisoners at the end of the celebration. Blue Beaver ended by saying, Chiefs decide this. Me go by what chiefs say. Now what you say. I have no choice, Blue Beaver. I'll meet your men in contest, but you must be fair. You must permit me to use a bowl that I've used before. Uh, you got bowl? It's Tunnels. He left it with his horse in the trees above the camp. May he get it for me? Uh, let him get Come back quick. Tell him go now. The Lone Ranger stepped back from the group and told Tonto to get his bow and arrows for the archery contest. Then as he saw Blue Beaver explaining his action to the chief, the masked man whispered, Blue Beaver says some chiefs think I'm a white god. Are you sure Joe Tinnick will try to do otherwise? That gives me an idea. When you bring back the bow, also bring the sauce one man to gave me. The devil's dessert. Uh, puzzled, but without question, Tonto did as he was told. When he returned, the first of the contests began. The Lone Ranger was pitted against the greatest Indian archer in the West. Two white prisoners stood near the target and watched the red man shoot. Hey, look at that. Four shots all right around the center of the target. Yeah. 
The masked man will never be able to do as good as that. But the Lone Ranger drew back his bow four times, and four times the arrow sped straight and true into the target, landing dead center on the bullseye. Oh, leaping codfish. Look at that, will you? Yeah. Four shots landing inside the spots where the engine's arrows landed. The shooting contest with revolvers followed. When this competition ended, the first white prisoner chuckled. <laughs> mm. Yes, shucks, that was no contest. The masked fellow shot six times almost while the engine was shooting once. And each shot was dead centered like it was one shot. <laughs> Look at them engines sitting there dumbfounded. They don't believe what they saw. And I can't blame them. The Lone Ranger's astounding performances had a startling effect on the chiefs. They admired the unbelievable skill of the masked man, but now they feared him more. Spurred on by a desperate Joe Tintic, they talked again and reached the decision which Blue Beaver would be forced to accept because of their unanimous agreement. The Lone Ranger, familiar with Indian language and dialects, had heard the fate they were planning for him as the chiefs entered the teepee. They planned to feed him and then kill him slowly to see how strong he was in death. The Lone Ranger recalled that some of them had thought him a god at first, and he made a quick decision, speaking low so that the braves on guard could not hear him. He told Tonto of the idea that had come to his mind earlier. That bottle of devil dessert, you have it? Uh-huh. In pocket of pants, Mr. Mahati. Good. They're going to feed and kill us. We'll be seated next to Blue Beaver. That's perfect for my plan. Here's what we'll do. I'll talk to the chief and keep his attention from you. The Indian chiefs emerged from the teepee and formed a semicircle around the fire. The Lone Ranger and Tonto were placed at either side of Blue Beaver, and bowls of food were placed before them. The Lone Ranger could see Tonto's hand come slowly from his pocket and move imperceptibly towards the great chief's bowl. The masked man raised his arms melodramatically, causing everyone to look up at them, paying no attention to Tonto. Blue Beaver, look at me. Do you remember what some of your chiefs said about me before? Huh? What'd they say? They said I might be a god. But Joe Tintic said no. Do you believe Joe Tintic? Huh? You mean you god? I mean, Blue Beaver, that though you are well now, I shall arrange for you to become sick again. Unless you release me and all my white friends whom you hold as prisoners. The Lone Ranger saw Tonto's hand draw back. The Indian's eyelid lowered in the signal that all was prepared. You and your tribes will be punished for what you have done. Indians not afraid of soldiers. We fight them if they come. Blue Beaver not sick. Must make celebration because gods make Blue Beaver get well. Must do what gods think good. That's the way you feel, is it? Uh. You think you must kill white people to show gratitude to your gods? All right. Go ahead and feast. Uh. Eat your food, Blue Beaver. You will soon learn there is something more powerful than your god. Not hear more talk. We eat. All chiefs eat. Mano Kiza Hopi! Blue Beaver turned, reached for his bull, and placed it before him, commanding his braves to eat. They waited respectfully for the old man to take the first mouthful. The Lone Ranger spoke in ponderous tones as he waved his hands with melodramatic exaggeration. Eat, Blue Beaver, and see what happens. Uh, me eat. The masked man's voice rose so all could hear. Fire! Great fire! Burn the chief in punishment! You say... See, all of you, I warned him. His food has turned to fire in his mouth. Here, what's happened? Give him water. Here, I have some. I'll give it to him. The chief, viewing the scene, became quiet as they realized the masked man might be a god of retribution. As Joe Tintic knelt to pour water into the mouth of the suffering Blue Beaver, the Lone Ranger made his last dramatic gesture. Water is not going to cure the fire inside him. Water will make the fire greater. See? As he raised his hands once more in the gesture of magic, the water reached the burning mouth and stomach of Blue Beaver. As the Lone Ranger had expected, the burning sensation became even greater, as did the screams of the stricken chief. You see what I have done? Now I'll tell you how to save your chief. Him die? You save him? He'll not die. You do as I say. Take him to his teepee and sit in silence, as you did when he was ill before. Instruct the braves to return all the white prisoners. I'll lead them away from here. Also, return my guns and all arms of the captives. We do. We tell brave. Not one who gave her die. You did this. You did this. Yes, Joe Tenney. 
And from what Roy Lyman told me, you and he did this. Made prisoners of the people who lived in Morganville. Made prisoners of those you didn't kill. Here comes great one. Thanks. All right, Kenny. Get your hands up. You too, Lyman. Right. Oh. Joey's holding a gun on us. He can't do this. Make your Indians take it. I can't. Look at them. They think he's a god, most of them. Those that don't are afraid of him anyway. You better do as he says, Lyman. My people aren't going to help him. Yeah, do you see? They're leaving. What? Where are they going? Sit in silence until Blue Beaver gets better. Just as they did before. Uh, what about us? You're going to be turned over to Captain Fannin and these men. And Cap Morgan leads them here. That should be soon. Morgan! Joe, I, I thought you killed him. So it was Joe who shot him. You people from Morganville remember that. We will. We'll be witnesses against Tintic and Lyman. We learned why Lyman wants to take over Morganville, too. Then tell that to Captain Fannin when you turn these men over to him. Use Lyman's gun to hold both of them. Sure, we'll tie him up. All right, Lyman. Help me with these rattlers, Sheriff. You too, Ed. You see? <laughs> Captain Fannin, leading his cavalry troop, looked in surprise as they came upon the people marching in the direction of Morganville. Oh! 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 How did this happen? I thought the Indians had you people captured. They did, Captain, but they set us free. And what a story that is. We'll tell it to you when you take these two hombres, Tiddick and Lyman, off our hands. You want him for murder. I didn't arrest him. But uh, why did they set you free? Uh, On account of a masked man who did all kinds of things. Would you know anything about a masked man in these parts? I do. He's the man you're talking about, too. He sent Cap Morgan after me and my troops. But we weren't needed, it seems. He did the job himself. (laughs) Yep, he's the one who could. You see, he's the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.